I would tell her everything's gonna work out. It always does. So just hang in there for the ride. I'm Colette Malak. I'm a freshman in college and I go to Georgia Military College. So I was born in Congo um, and I left my home country, Congo, at the age of four. So I don't really remember much of Congo other than what my parents tell me. But um, I do remember living in Uganda because we lived there for five years doing our um, immigration process. Um, we left our home country because of war. And my father was a, um, he's a pastor. And at the time, he was trying to become a reverend or whatever. And so my family was kind of like a big target. And like people everywhere, they really didn't like him because he was a doctor. And um, he was like basically like a big deal, you know, like in our town. But um, there was, with that came a lot of like hatred and a lot of um, people who would want to like get rid of him. We had green cards. So we did a, um, it took us five years to get the, um, everybody approved or whatever. So um, that was another reason people hated my parents is because most people, it takes them 15 to 20 years, but it only took us five years. And my father like truly thanks the Lord for that. So we moved to Clarkston, Georgia. But then when I started going to school and seeing all these kids and like kids are like mean. So they would like pick on me and they were like, why does she look like that, this and that. And like, I didn't have the like proper shoes or whatever. And they were all like, so I kind of tried hard to like fit in. But um, my parents didn't understand, so it was like, I was kind of stuck in between two worlds. My mom and my dad, they've been together since they were 18. They got married, they had an arranged marriage. I understand they're like, where we come from is different than here. And like, they're always telling us, oh, you can't assimilate to being here just because we're here. And I'm like, but how are we gonna live here if we're not living how like, how other people who live here live? And they just, they can't, I don't think they ever will understand that concept because they're so stuck in their mindset of where we're from. But I didn't want to do that, so I joined the army. And it was kind of like an outlet, I'm not gonna lie. Me and my dad, we don't get along or whatever, but like, I want to pursue his, like I want to do what he couldn't get to do. And he actually doesn't know that, but um, he's the reason I'm doing this for him. But um, he, um, when we came here, he wasn't able to continue being a doctor because of the language difference. And if they had, if he wanted to continue his education, he would have gotten the equivalence of uh, an associate's degree. So he'd have to go back to school for four more years, and he didn't want to do that. But um, I wanted to uh, carry on and do travel nursing for a little bit, and then um, my brother encourages me to um, go on and get my doctorate, but I don't know about that yet. So. Me and her are both medics. We were at Fort Sam Houston in Texas uh, at the same time. We ended up being bunk mates, and so we got to know each other a little bit there. And then she told me that she was going to GMC, and I was like, no way, I don't know anyone else that's coming here. So I wanted to like roommate with her, and we got to know each other a little bit there. And then we got here, and she helped me move all my stuff in the room. We drug it all across the floor, and it was just, yeah, we sat in the room for like 30 minutes, like, oh my gosh, we're actually here. So ever since then. So the whole saying of opposites attract I never really understood it until I guess I met her because she's like the complete opposite of me. She's like very outgoing. She likes to talk to people and I'm very introverted. I like to keep to myself. So when we first got here, like I told y'all earlier, she really thought I didn't like her because I just didn't talk to her in the room. I didn't do anything. And she, it kind of like, she made me grow out of my shell and like I was forced to talk to her because being here, you're forced into relationships that like, you're forced into them, but they're beneficial for you. And like, once you realize that, you know, I'm here for good and like, you know, it's benefiting me. Like, they help you flourish and become a better person every day. I believe she was definitely placed in my life for a reason. I prayed a lot um, for a good friend, um, someone that I could connect to. Um, because I do have a loud personality, it kind of sometimes comes off intimidating to some people, but her having someone that's similar to me, but also, different enough to make me grow as a person is something that I really prayed for as a, someone that I would find here and then I found her so I definitely know that she was meant to be in my life. The cadre here is really nice. They like like to joke with us a lot and um, it's like a although it's like we're held to these standards that are up here they understand that we're humans too and we're just here to get an education and like they treat us like normal humans. I think uh, 
being a female officer myself, I understand the value of somebody who's um, not too proud, not too humble at the same time, somebody who's right in the middle, um, who can bring a strength to the program and show other females in particular and even male cadets that like, you can do this, um, you can push through, um, achieve whatever you want to achieve. Physically, she's super strong. I love seeing her in the gym. She goes to work out with us. But I think academically, um, she is absolutely at the top of her class. Um, she comes in every day willing to work. Um, I think her background, too, has really pushed her to show a work ethic that other cadets may not understand, but they can definitely take example from. I'm still kind of working on the whole self-journey thing, but for sure it has helped me realize my strengths and weaknesses. Um, I'm not afraid to ask questions, which some people look at it as like, oh, she's asking stupid questions, this and that. But like, if, I'm, if I don't know something, I'm always going to ask. Like, I don't, in my mind, I'm like, this might be stupid, but I, if I don't ask now, how will I know? Very passionate about the things that she does, and she doesn't let people or challenges or anything like that stop her. It might be difficult, I'm not saying she doesn't go through difficult times, um, but she puts on a strong face in front of other people and when she does have those difficult times, she you know, gathers herself, she talks to the people that she's close to, she calls her family or talks to me, and she gets through them always. I think she's going to be a really good example of a servant leader. Um, she understands that the mission needs to be accomplished, which is great, and she does get results. Um, but I think more than anything, she is that example. She leads by example. Um, she can tell people, she's not scared to tell people, hey, this is what needs to get done, and this is how we're going to do it, while keeping their interests in mind too. Not only giving them a task, but giving them purpose. I think that she's really, really good at that. Georgia Military College. Their motto is start here, go anywhere. And I really like that because it doesn't matter where you start, you, it matters where you end up. Like you could always make a different route, make a different path for yourself.